Already, this is um, activity four, <clears throat> entitled Segment and Angle Measurement. Uh, it all adds up. Um, and as we go throughout this activity, um, we need to keep it as simple as that. Um, just remember that it, that it, it all adds up. Um, and that these two lessons, lesson 4-1 and 4-2, um, we can summarize the entire <clears throat> two lessons into one phrase, and that is part plus part equals the whole. Um, and as long as we keep it simple and, uh, and think of it as, those way, as that and, and approach all the problems um, with that simplicity, um, we shouldn't uh, have any issue with <clears throat> any of these topics. And before we get going, I do want to kind of re remind us of some things. If we were to have some segment, uh, and it doesn't matter what it's called, but let's say let's we have a segment A, B that seems to be pretty generic. Um, if you have this segment and then you place another point, doesn't matter where it is, let's call it X. Um, you have to understand that in this diagram, there are three segments. You have um, the whole thing, segment AB, uh, and then you have a second segment, AX, which is a part of that whole, and then you also have a third segment, which is XB. Um, and so this scenario right here is going to come up time and time and time again. Um, and so you just can't forget that there truly there are three segments in that one diagram and you need to be able to um, analyze each one separately. Also, with that train of thought, uh, when you have a diagram like this pertaining to angles, so let's call it angle A, B, C, um, <clears throat> remember that if you have a point that is in between the two sides or, or in between the two rays, um, anywhere in this region, that is referred to as the interior of the angle. And so if I had some point, let's call it I because it's in the interior of this angle. If I place some point there, well, if I were to create a ray, originating from the vertex of my original angle, then I have ray BI. Now when I <clears throat> draw that in, that one angle, so we had the whole angle ABC, now that I've introduced this point that's in the interior of the angle and created this ray, it's now breaking this one angle, the whole angle ABC, into two parts. So now we can consider angle ABI and then also angle IBC. So um, this should not be anything new, but just remember that <clears throat> when you have this diagram here, there is a total of three segments. Uh, and when you have this diagram here, there is a total of three angles. And, and this is the meat right here, what we're going to be dealing with this entire um, activity. Um, so let's start reading and then get into it. Uh, our learning targets is to apply this segment addition postulate. So we're going to have to figure out well, what in the heck that is. Um, and we're going to use that to find lengths of, of segments in different scenarios. Also, we're going to use the definition of midpoint uh, to find lengths of segments. And I'm sure that we're familiar with that term, midpoint. Um, but we're going to see its implications in geometry and finding segment lengths. Uh, it says <clears throat> that in geometry, Axioms or postulates, so that's a new word there. So let's go over here to math terms. It says, um, to prove a rule, at least one other rule must be used. Um, that just means you got to start from somewhere. Um, and those are those axioms. Those are those postulates. That's your foundation. Those are very similar to your undefined terms. you, you got to start somewhere. Um, so in order to develop ge uh, geometry, some rules called postulates are accepted without proof. Um, so whenever you <clears throat> hear about a postulate, um, that is, um, it's a rule that is, is accepted without proof. It should be common sense that that works, that that happens. Um, so in geometry, axioms or postulates are statements that are accepted as true without proof in order to provide a starting point for deductive reasoning. Remember, deductive reasoning is all about facts, it's all about properties, um, and it's formulating an argument that consists of those properties and postulates um, that are being justified 
<clears throat> and um, those statements are being justified by those postulates and, pros- and properties um, to be able to prove something. And remember, deductive reasoning is what transforms a conjecture into a theorem. <clears throat> it says, like point, line, and plane, distance along a line is an undefined term in geometry used to define other geometric terms. So we're going to, just like we took point, line, and plane, and we used those undefined terms to um, formulate a definition um, of like segment and ray and um, angle, um, we're going to use this undefined term distance along a line to help us um, kind of unpack and, un- and discover um, geometry. It says, for example, the length of a line segment is the distance between its endpoints. So <clears throat> if I had some segment here, this is segment WZ. We refer to the length of this segment as the distance between the two endpoints. Um, so we refer to that the distance between these two endpoints. It's also the same thing as saying, hey, that's the length of segment WZ. And that's exactly what this is saying. The third paragraph reads, if two points are no more than one foot apart, then you can use or you can find the distance between them by using an ordinary ruler. Um, So I was just saying, hey, if you've got two points, um, for instance, these here, that uh, it's less than a foot, and you can get out a ruler, and you can just measure that to determine its length. Uh, it says the inch rulers below have been reduced to fit on the page, basically saying, hey, these two diagrams, um, they're, they're not drawn to scale. Clearly, this is not one inch. It's just um, shrunk it down so they can fit on the page. Um, <clears throat> so if you look at this diagram here, we have segment AB. And when we're talking about the object, we use this notation with the bar above the two endpoints. So this is talking about the, the object. This is the geometric figure. This has size. This has shape. Um, it says, in the figure, the distance between point A and point B is five inches. Obviously, um, we have one, then two, then three, then four, then five inches. So <clears throat> we can just say that the length of this segment AB is five inches. It says, of course, there is no need to place the zero of the ruler at point A. So it's saying this distance is not going to change. These points aren't going to move magically. So yeah, we could take a ruler like this and, and place one endpoint exactly at zero and then just measure it. But we can also move this ruler around and that length will not change. It's still going to be, in this case, in this diagram, five inches. And so <clears throat> that's what it says down here. It says in the figure below, the two inch mark is now on point A. In this case, the length of segment AB, which is huge. Notice how when I approached this notation, I read it as the length of segment AB. <clears throat> so if we go over here to reading math, it says that this notation, two capital letters, no space in between them, no notation above them, that denotes the distance between points A and B. If, a, if point A and point B are the endpoints of segment, segment AB, then that denotes the length of segment AB. So to kind of wrap all that up, what that's saying is, yes, we have this object here, segment WZ. And so when you use this notation, you're talking about the actual object. It's, it's a figure. Um, but when you lose that bar and you just write... WZ, the two endpoints right next to each other with no space and no notation above it, you read this as, put in quotations, and this is what you would say, length of segment WZ. And that's how you would you read that. It's also understood as, put in quotations, the distance between point W and point 
Z. Those are both accepted interpretations, but they mean the exact same thing. If I want to talk about the length of this segment, that is the distance between point Z and point W. And so that's what this is saying out here. But what you've got to recognize is that there is a huge, huge, huge difference between when you're talking about segment AZ as an object, and so this has has shape, has size. You're talking about the actual object, but when, then when you do this notation, this is a numerical value. This is length. This is distance. Some sort of measurement. So we're talking about numerical values. <clears throat> um, so back to this. It says that in the figure below, the two inch mark is on point A. In this case, the length of segment AB measured in inches is seven minus two, which is the exact same thing as two minus seven. You're taking the absolute value of the difference of the coordinates. So if A is at two and the other endpoint, in this case B is at seven, you take the difference it doesn't matter what order you take the difference in. Um, and once you've done, once you've taken the difference, you take the absolute value of that. So 7 minus 2, that's the absolute value of 5. That's the same thing as the absolute value of negative 5. That is simply 5. Remember, absolute value is the distance from 0. So the absolute value of positive 5 is the same thing as absolute value of negative 5. <clears throat> it says that the, the number obtained as a measure of distance depends on the unit of length. So this number, whether it's 5 inches or 16 centimeters or 70 yards, that number, like 5 or 70 or 17, um, that's not a unique number. It just it depends on what unit of length you're talking about. So I think we're all familiar with inches and feet. I could have some segment AB that is three feet long. So right now that number is three. Um, and so I can say that the length of segment AB is equal to three feet. But it's also a true statement to say that the length of segment AB is 36 inches. So that number um, it just depends on what unit of measure you're, you're, you're speaking about. Uh, so it says, for example, the distance between two points in inches will be a different number than the distance between the two points in centimeters. So that number is not unique, but the distance between that, how much ground is, is being covered, um, is a constant. It just depends on what uh, units you're using. So don't get stuck on that number. Um, over here on math terms, it says it, it introduces the ruler postulate. And remember, a postulate, um, that's a statement uh, that is accepted as true without proof. So this ruler postulate, this is just common sense. And there's two parts to it. Part A says, to every pair of points, there corresponds a unique positive, positive number called the distance between those points. So if you have two points, there's going to exist a unique positive number. Um, and it just depends on what units you're talking about. Um, distance is always positive. So please write that down. Distance is always positive. It doesn't matter... <clears throat> um, what direction you're going, you are covering positive ground. So um, it, no one would ever say, man, I'm exhausted from running negative two miles. Like that just doesn't make sense. No one would ever say that. Um, distance is always positive. And so, you know, some of you may be thinking, well, Mr. Niven, what if I'm running backwards? Um, again, you, it doesn't matter the direction, okay? Um, you are covering positive ground.